the prayer, I want us to talk to the Holy Spirit individually to give each and every one of us a teachable heart and to give us illumination and understanding in the word of God, even as we learn as it fits this day. Shall we pray? Commit yourself to God. Thank him for how he has been with us hitherto. For the gift of life, for salvation of soul. For the miracle of going out and coming in safely this time. Thank him on behalf of your family. And on behalf of your church, your ministry, your business. And above all, for our nation Nigeria. Tell him to come and teach you yourself by himself and for himself today in the name of Jesus. And so, as dear Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you for another opportunity given to us to learn at your feet this day. Holy Spirit divine, we have no power of our own. We are looking up unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. For you promised us that we will receive of God and show unto us and make everything clear up. Father, as we want to go into your word this day, we pray that this word will be a light unto our path. And it will liberate us and conform us to the image of the firstborn. So much so that we continue to dwell higher and soar higher like that of an eagle in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Shall we be seated gloriously in our Father's house? Today, 26th of July, year 2022, we shall be admonishing ourselves on the topic, Christianity and Homosexuality. In those days, this topic is not a common topic that churches like to, to discuss openly. But as we all know, that we are in the end time and perilous times are here. So we need to dwell and tell ourselves the truth and the stand of God in everything, including homosexuality. Thank God for the word of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are told that nobody should take anything out of it or add anything to it. Unfortunately, because of the perversion in the society, many of the Christian teachers or preachers or tend to twist a verse of the scripture or a portion to blend whatever they, they believe it is right. But the truth is the word of God stands sure no matter how you manage to manipulate it. The truth will still stand before you. Because the truth is simple anyway. If you are talking about the truth, the truth is simple. By the time you are trying to twist the truth, it becomes complicated. And that is because we want to justify our action. I pray this day that the word of God will be more clearer, more truthful, and be simple in our lives individually. 
Our text for today is taken from the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 21 to 28. Romans 1, 21 to 28. Are we all there? Is anybody reading for us today? Amen. And they did like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Amen. May the Almighty Father not let any of us or any of our loved ones be in this condition in Jesus' name. God will never give up on us. And we will never give, on, give up on God and give up on ourselves. The lesson introduction says, Today, especially in the Western world, homosexuals and lesbians have gained substantial momentum. They have come out as the time goes, left their closet. Through television, radio, newspapers and magazines, they are preaching their doctrine of tolerance, equality, justice, and love. They do not want to be perceived as abnormal or dangerous. They want to be recognized and accepted socially, politically, and otherwise. In this study, we shall examine the biblical perspective and the Christian worldview as touching this subject matter. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. What is homosexuality? Homosexuality is a relationship that involves having sexual intercourse with the people of the same sex. It is referred to as lesbianism among the female gender. Homosexuality is not natural. A look at the male and female bodies reveals that they are obviously designed to couple. The natural design is apparent. It is so natural to couple male. It is not natural to couple male with male or female with female. Homosexual desires, which may feel natural, are actually unnatural. Other perverted sexual relationships are pedophilia, that is an abnormal sexual attraction towards children, and bestiality, that is sexual relationship with animals of any kind. 
from the passage that we read. And also, culturally, in this part of the world, we all know that it is an abomination for same sex, for the two people of the same sex to be having sexual immorality together. It is an abomination. But because of the world that we are in now, because we are the end time and we are in the perilous times, people that are practicing it, even within our community here, many of them are bold to say it. They are now asking for recognition legally. They want to be joined in marriage, which they have started in some part of the world. They want their own quota system in everything that the God is doing. They don't want the society to label them as somebody, as an outcast, so to say. But the word of God gives us a very clearer picture of what they are doing. Societal attitude. Pro homosexual politicians and the homosexual community want legal protection for having intercourse with the people of the same sex. They also want their views taught in school. Can you imagine that? Promoted over the airwaves and codified in literature. The homosexual community also attempts to use political power to try and control the church. My dear brothers, we are saying it's not story. It's happening in real life every day all over the world, including Lagos. Don't be so sure that it's not happening here. Hallelujah. So it is not far-fetched. But now, in developed countries like UK, US, they have come to the level of teaching the children in schools. They will tell them, you don't have to force such a child that you are a male, you should behave like a male. Oh, you are a girl. You should behave like a girl. All in the name of human rights. They will tell you that you should leave the child as it is. That as the child grows, when it gets to a certain age, the child is free to choose whichever sex he wants to be. If it is a boy child and he chooses to be a girl or a lady later, there is no problem. They have the we are with all to help that such child to actualize the so-called dream. That is to tell us to what extent the devil has really blindfolded our people. No wonder the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians that if the gospel is hid, it is hidden to them that are lost in the world. Them that the devil, the God of this world, has been able to win over. 
to himself. Because if we go to the Bible, shall we all open to the book of Genesis 19? 4 to 5. Media, please. Genesis 19, verses 4 and 5. We all know this story. Because of their word of when they entered They've been threatening death. <coughs> They've been threatening these men as they were coming. You can imagine the look, the angelic look that will be on their faces. So they were already attracted. These men, they were attracted. The Sodomites are really wanting to have a taste of those two men. So much so that Lot even begged them that they should not do that now. At least they've taken cover in her, his or in her, his abode. That he has two daughters, virgin for that matter. That she will release it to them to do whatever they want to do. But they refuse. You can imagine the level of abomination. You can imagine the level of perversion in the hearts of men. I wonder how many would want to gang rape two men when the Bible recorded that young and old from all over were rushing. They even pushed lots away. Thank God for God. God will always be God. And the angels blindfolded them so much so that they cannot see. That is to tell you that since this homosexuality has been on. And it is still on. Even now, after the demolition of Sodom and Gomorrah, we have 1,001 Sodom and Gomorrah community all over the world. May the Lord deliver them in Jesus' name. Also, from there, we can see that it is an abomination. Because the Bible made us to understand that God created them male and female. We all know that he created Eve from Adam. If Adam did not need a feminine partner, I don't think God will waste his precious time creating Eve anyway. And it takes male and female to copulate and procreate have you ever seen a male that married to a male and they would get pregnant and get children? God never planned it. It is a lie from the pit of hell. It is a perversion from those people that lose guard of their hearts. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. That lose guard of their hearts to the God of this world, which is the devil. And do you know what? It is not only homosexuality or lesbianism. As we go along, we will see so many sin that were grouped together. Let us open to Leviticus 18.22. And another person, Leviticus 20.13. Uh -huh. That is, 
A man should not lie with a man. What we are referring to lie here is having carnal knowledge, sexual intercourse. Not that two of you cannot sleep on the on the same bed. We are talking of sexual perversion here. Also, Leviticus 20:13. Yes. Hallelujah. This was Mosaic law. No go come. Once you are caught in the act, you are going to die. And nobody will be guilty of your blood. Thank God for the dispensation of grace. But see us here. Many of us are misusing the so-called grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have forgotten that our Lord Jesus Christ told us that he is, not, he is here to fulfill those law. That he is not here to condemn any law from the Old Testament. In fact, the laws, some of the laws in the New Testament is even harder than that of the Old Testament. Old Testament, if you are caught in adultery, if you are caught, that is when they will stone you to death. Lord Jesus said in your heart, if you lost after a woman, you are just thinking, imagining it. The Bible said it is sin unto you. So which one is more easier? So don't let us be derailed. Don't let us be fooled. We are children of light. The Bible is our standard. The word of God they are a and amen. It never changes. God never lower his standard. Once you claim to be for God, make sure you are on the Lord's side. Don't get carried away with sensual pleasure, with unnatural passion. Thank God for freedom to choose a wife and to have a husband. The Bible makes it clear. Let every man have his own wife. He even said in the book of Psalm that anybody that findeth a wife eh, obtain favor. A proverb. Why, why then? We all see the precept upon precept in the word of God. From the creation of Adam, God himself said it is not good for a man to be alone. Let me create for him and help me. And God did not create another man. God created a woman. So much so when Adam saw, he said, ah, this one is a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. And the two of them couple, they couple it together. They bring forth a bell and who now? Cain. As it was in the beginning, so it is now. I don't know why the devil has bewitched some so-called Christians all over so much so that all in the name of twisting the Bible, preaching love, they are now, they tend to legalize or make people believe, especially the younger ones, that there is nothing wrong in same-sex marriage or same-sex relationship or same-sex sexual intercourse. It is wrong, it is devilish, it is not of God, and the end of such people is damnation. May God help us in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10. 
1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Hallelujah. We can see the likes of the people that God group with the homosexual. I'm going somewhere. Personally, let every one of us look at all those people that they are going together. Are you qualified for anyone? Even if you are not an homosexual. Are you a fornicator? Idolater? Revilers? Extortioners? Thief? Covetousness? Are you a drunkard? God forbid. What am I trying to say? It's so easy for we Christians to condemn some acts within, among the people, if by the grace of God we are able to walk over that sin for whatever reason, due to our belief system, due to our background, till we meet Christ. And God has been helping us. We are still standing strong. Because for these people, for the so-called uh, the homosexual, they even have a word, uh, acronyms for them. LGBT. Eh? 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 Boy, lesbian, gay, guinea, company. They have it for them. LGBT plus plus. So anywhere you see those signs, <laughs> run for your dear life. Oh. They are coding everything. And what number one thing that they are accusing the church for, that some churches now stand on and choose to support them, what's this discord, this hatred that believers show to them that they are castigating them that they, they themselves think of but is it only homosexual that is the sin that God um, condemn in the Bible what about fornicators what about heterosexual sin what about adulterers? That they all fall into the same category. That why are we not castigating those ones? That is to tell us that people are watching us. We Christians. We tolerate some sin in the church. And we go against some. That means we are practicing double standard. So as it is good for the good, it's also good for the ganders. If we are condemning homosexuality, I think we should also condemn every sexual perversion, including covetousness, including drunk drunkenness, according to the word of God. We shouldn't condemn only homosexuality. That is what some Christians, some churches, mostly in the Western world, dwell on. And they now said, let them come. They will marry them. Let them come. With time, they will show them the way. But at least the Bible says we should not throw the sinner away, but we should condemn the sin. 
But excuse me, we need to balance the scripture. You won't say because you want to, you don't want to condemn them. You now give them such liberty to now be influencing other people in the church. It is not done. The Bible made us to understand according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. At the point of rebirth, immediately an individual choose to confess his sin and turn a new leaf. I think at that point, we should try to, to model our new converts. That is to me where the, the brotherly love should start from. So much so that they will be so convinced of the love that God has for them that willingly, through the help of the Holy Spirit, they will change their ways. That should be our stand as Christians. Not that we will, we will say in the spirit of oneness, in the spirit of one love, one God, we want to, we want to allow them to mingle and influence people. It's not right. So much so that some are even giving them a place of authority in the church. All in the name of one love. It won't work. Light should not have anything to do with darkness. As long as we all know, according to the word of God, that homosexuality and other sexual immorality and other sins whatsoever is not of God, on no account she will permit it. Fine. We should do it accordingly by embracing the sinner provided the person has repented genuinely. Genuine repentance, godly sorrow, such person will not go back to it. God will help us in Jesus' name. From my personal experience, honestly, I don't know that uh, the issue of homosexuality has become rampant in this environment. Until about three years ago, I was invited by an NGO for a job through a colleague. So we went for the training. When we got there, they now explain the nitty gritty of the job. Apparently, a lot of people in the society that an ordinary citizen respects, notable people, they are all into this homosexual issue. And many of their prey, a larger percentage of their prey, are younger men, younger than, than themselves by far. And they have what it takes. When we are talking of money, they have it. Unfortunately, because scientifically it's not right, though, it, it poses a lot of dangers. They've really bastardized some of them that their anatomical structure has been damaged. So, they now set up a clinic for them. You will never know it's a clinic. It's all just like a beautiful house in a nice, serene environment. You'll be shocked. You will not know what is going on in there. Come and see how they have bastardized the life of young men. 
Unfortunately, too, in Nigeria, they still have this um, human rights law that binds such things. You cannot condemn them. But when you are discussing with them, if any of them show a regret um, attitude or some somehow, when you just engage in talk, what brought them to it is nothing but money covetousness they lure them with money all these are undergrad undergraduates in campus you see many of them with um, silky cars you keep wondering it's not as if they are all from a rich home it is all this they are homosexual big partners that are buying it for them that is covetousness. How do you want to sow where you did? How do you want to reap where you did not sow? How can somebody just wake up one day, be giving you so much dollars, so much pounds, so much naira? For what? And to you, you think you are smart. You keep getting it, you keep going, meet me here, meet me there. By the time you know it, one of such meetings will be at the base and you can no more escape because they know if you go out you will tell and these are the people that <laughs> the society respects so much I mean I was so sad unfortunately I wasn't that strong to take up that job just for three months come and see the pay I said how can I how can I really you know I don't have the the heart I can't imagine my own son God forbid among them and if you see the way they, they package themselves it is just God. We need to pray for our children, for our youth, for everybody around us. Now, more of those things are coming up. We have them in some local governments already. But the thing is you can never know. It's highly coded with security. Is highly coded, highly confidential. What am I trying to say? I don't want us to be ignorant, thinking, ah, this one is not my problem, Jerry. Thank God. It's everybody's problem. Oh. Do you know some of our married men are into it? Because they don't have the boldness in this part of the world yet. They will marry so as not for anybody to suspect them. But then they will have issues in their marriage. They will marry just to fulfill societal value. But they have an agenda. And they still carry on. Unfortunately, in Romans 1, 26 to 28, let us go to that Romans. Orowa oni su Olorun o Olorun o de ni jowo ninu Orowa This is serious Romans 1 26 to 28 We've Pastor And with men walking that which is unseemly, seeing in themselves that recompense of their error which was met, and even as they did not like to retain God in 
God gave them over every reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Hmm. Can we all see that we will never belong to that generation in Jesus' name? I mean, by the time God has been warning you and, and the devil is just there, he has really severed your conscience. That despite all the warnings, this is what happened to these people in Rome. They say, now go to a stage. God himself handed them over to a reprobate man to do that which is detestable, to do that which is an abomination, to do that which is unnatural, to do that which is perverse, to do that which is sinful. Who will now deliver them? By the time God hands somebody over to the devil, that will not be our portion. Having said that, we as Christians have a lot to do. Because I won't be surprised if we have people in the church engaging in these things. I told you by the virtue of my job. I have many cases, young marriages, that the wife, you know, one, one problem will lead to the other during counseling. With all the problems, somehow the wife will got to know. I have some that he just opened the husband's phone. That's why the fact that that one um, how do you call that thing? Password. But all of all of this generation, we are all guru in in IT. Anytime I said I password my phone in the house, even my grandchildren, mm -hmm. to me I have really secured the phone. They will just be laughing that mom me. If you want to code your phone, come and meet us. We will tell you how to. I say, you, how can you know how I code? They will open it. Talk less of my children. They will open it. So the lady opened it. He saw photographs. You can imagine a marriage of three years. This first child is just clocking two. And Wahala has started during pregnancy. One thing leads to the other. The lady just called me and said, This is what, this is what I forwarded the photograph. I said, Okay, at this junction, I thought it was an issue. I know it is an issue of um, adultery. I don't know that it is homosexuality. I now said, at this junction, I will link you up with a professional counselor. I'm a nurse. I'm not a counselor. This one passed me too. So, I've referred her. They are still on it. You can imagine I'm just saying this to let you know how, how common those things is. It's not far-fetched. Don't think it is happening somewhere, somewhere. Right under your nose, it might be happening there. It's because God has chosen not to explain. The male. So it is among the females. Some are so perverse that their own interest is towards children. It's so disheartening. Go to emergency section of any of the MCC in Lagos State, maternal and child care hospitals. 
there is hardly in a week that you will not see three to five fresh cases of rape as young as a two-year-old girl a one year under one three you will get home you will think you are hungry by the time they bring some cases and you are still on duty I tell you and to even leave your word to anybody sometimes you begin to doubt your husband because we've seen it that one is even getting more common some will abort for the child so they until wahala boss they will now be coming some they have bastardized the life of their daughters and only god knows how they hypnotize those ones they will just charge them not to tell a lot of fathers will be giving her daughter daily pills contraceptive pills because he's having sexual immorality sexual aversion sexual with that girl i mean and if if you still ask us to feel any form muslim or christian we will feel one if it is in the church we will still raise up holy hands thank god i am not god and now you know that we human beings we cannot be god strike but it's easier said it is still the same measure of um, sin with an idolaters that's where i'm going with a drunkard with a thief no wonder the bible says without holiness no one shall see god thank god for the blood of the lamb it is through the blood of Jesus. He's the only one that cleanses us, that can cleanse us. But at the same time, you cannot say you now belong to God, you have let go of all those things, and you still now go back. It doesn't work that way. There is a thin line that separates heaven and earth. God will not let anybody that we know cross that path that God will now hand him over to a reprobate mind. That will not be our portion. Also, how can we overcome all these things, this Christianity and homosexuality? We must come to the knowledge that they are in the church. I just want us to, to know that. They are in the church. Oh. They are within your community. Just know yourself. So don't, don't let lose your guard. Watch out who you flock with. Take caution who your children flock with or your sisters and brothers. More than ever before, let us try to wash our mind with the waters of the world. It's so easy to get carried away because out there is getting more difficult economically, socially, educationally, it's getting more difficult. The perversion is increasing by the day. It's not even in addition. It's in race to power. It's in multiplication. You need to go out. You need to, you need to visit places. That is when you will know that the moral decadence in this, our society, has gone far. No wonder the Bible says, if it were possible, the very elect will be deceived. When from the pulpit, people are embracing 
homosexuality, adultery, fornication, all in the name of uh, if God decided to what is the English version? Tolu Wamban Sami Eshe. Kalo Maduro. Who can stand? That God understand. Once saved, ever saved. We are under the dispensation of grace. It's a lie from the pit of fellow. It is the same Bible that said we must be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. It is this scripture that says without holiness, no man shall see God. It is this scripture that says we should, we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That is why we have the law. This book even tells us that partial obedience is disobedience. It is in this book that said, if you want to be hot for me, be hot. If you want to be cold, be cold. Look warm, I will spoil you out. It is still this word. It is this, this word that said, we are going to give account of everything we do here. The very first day I read, we are in the book of Revelation, that um, every idle word shall be accounted for. Uh, I said, which word is I do? Which one is not I do? In one of the open heavens, someday I read that jesting, um, what do we call it now? Say comedy or what? Or which word will I now use? They said, if it has no virtue, if it is not of good reports, if it is not honest. They said we will give account if we partake in it. I tell you, my dear sisters and brothers, narrow is the gate indeed. That is why few people are working in it. But I am pretty sure that God knows our frame. Yes, he's our creator. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows me better than I know myself. I engrave in the palm of his hand. The problem with us is just to be disciplined and obey. It is this flesh, oh. This is our senses. May God help us, so. Because by the time to analyze, analyze, we say it doesn't matter but it matters. In conclusion, the Bible surely has crystal clear statements against homosexuality. Hence, it is difficult to see how different groups can say the Bible supports homosexuality. But they try by redefining love, marriage, sex, homosexuality, etc. in order to accomplish their goal. But the truth is that God created man and woman, not man and man, or woman and woman. Final. No button. I will implore us to go through the notes at our time to pick each verse of the scripture and study. Shall we rise up? As we continue to talk to God, the race not to neither is it to the mighty or the strong, but it is of God that showeth mercy. Tell God to be merciful unto you and not you alone unto every member of your family, every member of your congregation, both young and old. Ask for mercy. And ask for the spirit of obedience to envelop us. Let us know that we are just passing through in this life. Heaven 
is our goal. Because we are created for his glory. And as many as are into any sexual perversion, be it homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, whatever, that the Holy Spirit in his infinite mercy will bring them to godly repentance, genuine repentance, with godly sorrow. If you are guilty of any of this, tell it to God. He's your father. He's a compassionate father. Go to the cross. Lay everything down at his feet. Confess your sin to him. Wash in his blood. And turn a new leaf. May the Lord answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Before we say the final prayer, don't let us forget our offering to drop it at the offering basket. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name, our Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you for another time to spend at your feet to learn your word this evening. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that more than ever before, the Holy Spirit will interpret the words and they will become rema in our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that these words will not stand against us in the day of judgment. We pray, O oh Lord, that more than ever before, you will energize us in our physical body, in our spiritual body, that we will ostracize our brain, and we will do all that we need to do according to your word, according to your standard. We will not be carried away by the wiles of the devil in this perverse world. Together with our children, together with our generation, and with the church of God. Father God, as we go, go with us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I will say don't let us forget to drop our offering